All right, so we're gonna talk about double triangles today, which is really just being able to create a vector diagram, interpret that diagram so that you can find your diagonals and break them up into their corresponding X and Y components, and then perform your calculations using the appropriate X values together and then using the appropriate Y values together, okay? So before we get into our example problems today, I wanna make sure that we review a little bit about diagonals in general. So when we're talking about diagonal lines, I want you to understand that all diagonals are accomplished because we have some vertical and horizontal um, motion or velocity or force, whatever our vector is there to represent. But we have some vertical piece and some horizontal piece that are happening simultaneously. So if this is a displacement vector, then my diagonal displacement would be because my object moved in the horizontal direction and in the vertical direction simultaneously, okay? And so we're gonna call this diagonal our resultant because it's our overall displacement if we started at this location and ended at that location, all right? <clears throat> now, if we were in a math class, we would probably see the labels A, B, and C. And so if we had two sides of our right triangle, then we would simply use Pythagorean theorem in order to calculate the missing side. If we are discussing our vectors in this class and we are going to separate any diagonal vectors that we may have into its corresponding horizontal and velocity uh, vertical components, then it's important that we understand what that means, okay? So the word component is just a term that means part, portion, all right? So this diagonal line has some portion or some part of that line that is in the horizontal direction. So we might refer to that as the horizontal component. <clears throat> the vertical part would be referred to as the um, vertical component or the Y component. So if we are trying to write our Pythagorean theorem so that it is specific to the vertical and horizontal directions that we will be interpreting in our readings, we may choose to rewrite our equation like this. Now you are free to write it either way um, when I'm grading written work, whether you write it as a squared equals b squared, a squared plus b squared equals c squared, or x squared plus y squared equals r squared, both of those formats are going to give you full credit. I just simply need you to clearly illustrate that you are using Pythagorean theorem. As I work through the example problems today, I am going to be choosing to use the x and y version because I'm going to be... Um, discussing, evaluating, analyzing um, all of my vectors as either being vertical or horizontal. So I'm going to choose to use that version today just so that hopefully it makes it easier to identify where all the parts came from. All right, so here's our first example. <clears throat> the record for the longest non-stop closed circuit flight by a model airplane was set in Italy in 1986. The plane flew a total distance of 1,239 kilometers. Assume that at some point, the plane traveled 1.25 times 10 to the third meters to the east, then 1.25 times 10 to the third meters to the north, and then finally 1.0 times 10 to the third meters to the southeast. Calculate the total displacement. So I will choose to use different colors for our different vectors. Again, the idea here is to make it so that you guys can understand well where all the parts for my math work are coming from. Um, and I apologize, this should be in scientific notation so that three is an exponent. I, I failed to edit the font on that, so very sorry. 
All right, so the first vector that we have is 1.25 times 10 to the third meters to the east. So I'm going to draw myself a vector to the east. Now, 1.25 times 10 to the third meters is simply a value expressed in scientific notation. If you are comfortable keeping it in scientific notation, then you can write it here. If you would like to write that out in standard form, you could do that as well. Just make sure that when it's time to do your math work, everything is in the necessary unit, okay? All right, then it says my uh, airplane is going to travel north. So I'm going to choose a different color for my second vector, and that's north, 1.25 times 10 to the third. Now we want to do our best to make these two vectors the same length because they represent the same magnitude. So I'm gonna make that just a little bit longer. All right, and that was this vector. So now we have a third vector and that third vector has a value of one times 10 to the third and that is to the southeast. Okay, calculate the displacement. So for this calculation, I need to figure out where is my displacement vector so that I can then determine its value. So our displacement is our overall change from position A to position Z. So the tail end of vector one is our starting location and the nose end of vector three is our ending location. So this is the resultant vector that they are asking me to solve for, okay? Now, it's important that when you um, create your vector diagrams, the orientation is correct. So north, south, east, west, or in this case, southeast. Um, do your best to draw those in the proper direction and do your best to draw them to scale. In other words, if I am drawing two vectors of equal magnitudes, those arrows should be the same length. If the second vector is twice as much as the first vector, then I need my length of that line to be twice as long, okay? Failure to create your vector diagram proportionally can absolutely create issues with interpreting the question correctly, and you may end up doing incorrect math work because your vector diagram does not properly illustrate the shape or the segment or the lengths that you need to be using, all right? Okay, so I wanna take a moment now and let's make sure that we go back to this idea that all diagonals can and should be broken up into their components. Every diagonal is the combination of vertical and horizontal. So in this illustration, my resultant value is some amount of horizontal motion combined with some amount of vertical motion. And you can see right here, I have a right angle between the two. So I will be working with the right triangle. Now you are going to need to determine how am I supposed to know, calculate, or determine the value for the x side of my um, resultant that I'm solving for. How am I supposed to determine the y side? So that's what we're gonna talk about. This horizontal length is going to be the total length that I will need for the x value of the displacement that I'm being asked to solve for. Now, how long is that? Well, if we look at our picture, it's all of vector one, which I drew in blue, and then it is the same as the horizontal part of vector three. So in order to calculate my total displacement in the horizontal direction, I'm simply going to add the horizontal part of vector one with the horizontal part of vector three. In order for me to determine 
how tall my Y component needs to be for my resultant. I need to say that it is vectored to in its entirety, which is oriented north, and then it would be vector three, its vertical component, but notice that vector three is going to be in the downward or negative direction. This vector is southeast. So if I'm looking at a compass, there's south, there's east, it's diagonally exactly half south, half east, right? So that means its components would be oriented south and oriented east. So this vertical value um, is basically canceling out some of vector two. So when we go to do our math work here, we're still going to, oops, we're still going to need to um, add up our vectors like we've done with the others. So it's gonna be y of vector two plus y of vector three. But in this particular case, vector three is in the negative direction. To the left or west is negative. So make sure that you make that a negative value when you go to uh, calculate your total vertical displacement. Okay, so now let's talk about how am I supposed to come up with these numbers? Well, vector one is just all horizontal, so I'm just going to take that at face value. Vector two is all vertical, I'm just going to take that at face value. Vector three, however, has to be broken up into its pieces so that I can determine those values. So one times 10 to the third is just the number 1,000. So I'm gonna to choose to write it out in standard form now. You can keep it in scientific notation if you'd like. So we've already talked about this is going to be the horizontal piece. This is going to be the vertical piece. And if we think back to the little compass that I gave us, um, <clears throat> we said that we were perfectly halfway between the two. Now that's important information because if I look at my triangle right now for vector three, I know where my right angle is located, but I do not currently know the values of either of the other two angles. And in this case, <clears throat> I do not have enough information right now to answer this question as is. You have to have at least two parts of your triangle in order to solve for any additional piece. So right now I only have one part. I only have my hypotenuse. So I either need one of the other two sides or I need one of the angles. So I obviously know the right angle, but that's not going to be used in my trig work. Instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to think back to the meaning of having a vector that is southeast. And so southeast would be exactly halfway between the two, which means this would be a 45 degree angle, which means this would be 45 degrees. So now I have enough information that I can go ahead and calculate my um, sides. So we're gonna do some trig here. Just a quick little review. Sokotoa is what we're using to help us write our trig formulas. So I have, um, let's do the horizontal side first. So I have my X component which is going to be the opposite side from the known value. So opposite makes it the sine of theta is equal to opposite over hypotenuse, where the opposite side in this case represents my x value. So in order to solve for this, I'm gonna multiply both sides by my hypotenuse. So the hypotenuse times the sine of theta is equal to x. So in order for me to calculate the x value of this third vector, I'm going to take my hypotenuse of 1,000 and multiply that by the sine of 45 degrees. If you have not already, you need to take your calculator and you need to check your mode to make sure that you are in degree mode. 
All right, so after we put this in our calculator, we get a value of 707, and then there's 0 .067 something. There's more digits in the decimal, uh, more decimal places in the calculator. For the purpose of today's lesson, I am not going to focus on the details of the numbers. I just wanna walk you through the process. So for all of the math work that I'm going to be doing, I am breaking my own rule and I'm going to actually just use rounded numbers because I want the numbers themselves to be as simple and straightforward as possible so we can focus on the trig and the geometry that's being applied here, okay? So we're just going to round this off to 707 meters. Now, in order for me to find the value for my Y side, um, this is going to be the side adjacent to the known angle. So that's going to make it the cosine of theta is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. And again, we're multi multiplying both sides by our hypotenuse. So the adjacent side, which is the Y side, is gonna be Y equals um, my hypotenuse times the cosine of theta. So Y is 1000 times the cosine of 45 degrees. And when we put that in our calculator, this also gives us a value of 707 meters. Now, do not make the incorrect assumption here that the X and Y components will always be the same. This is a special circumstance. Our triangle is a 45, 45, 90 degree triangle. And so hopefully from math class, you understand that the uh, vertical and horizontal components are the same. I do want you to make sure that you are calculating your values because the majority of the time you will have different values for those components. All right, so now that we've done the trig, how are we supposed to move forward to actually solving the question, which is what is the total displacement for the flight? So what we're going to do now is um, take our values and let's go ahead and calculate what the total horizontal um, displacement is. So we said that it's going to be the value of the horizontal for um, vector one, which we're taking at face value. So 1,250 is what that would be in standard form, plus the value of x3, which we just solved down here. So when we add those two together, my total horizontal um, displacement is 1,000 957 meters okay we're going to do the same thing over here for our y values my total y value is vector 2 at face value because it was all in the vertical direction so 1250 plus my y value which i just calculated down here is 707 but remember when we were analyzing the vector diagram in the beginning we said that this um, vertical component is actually downward or in the negative direction. So make sure that you input that negative there. So after we put this into our calculator, we're going to get a total Y value of 543 meters, okay? Now, the question is asking for this displacement value. So we are looking for R or C on our um, right triangle. So the way that we're going to calculate that, and I'm gonna go ahead and change here. The way that we're gonna calculate our value for R is we're gonna recognize that we have the two sides and we're looking for the hypotenuse. So it's A squared plus B squared equals C squared, or you can write it X squared plus Y squared equals R squared. Now I would like for you to go ahead and understand that once I plug my numbers in, um, I'm gonna have to square root in order to get this to be R, um, R instead of R squared. So I'm gonna do that to both sides. So I would like for you to get in the habit of setting up your math work this way, okay? I want it to be one entry for you in your calculator. So we are going to take the square root of 1,957 squared plus 543 squared. And all of that is going to give me my R value, okay? So for this particular question, let me just give myself a little more room here. For this particular question, we get 
an answer that should round to 2,030 meters, and that is going to be the total displacement for my airplane. All right, let's look at a different example. Here we have a plane that is flying 27 kilometers from the airport at 15 degrees above the horizon. So here is my horizontal reference point. And from here, it's an angle of 15 degrees. Okay, and this is a distance of 27 kilometers. Then he rises his altitude another 30 degrees for 41 kilometers. I wanna make sure you guys understand how to interpret this question or this problem. Um, I want you to give yourself a new horizontal reference point. Um, it's okay, that color. And then from here, we're going to give ourselves an angle of 30 degrees. Okay, this is how I want you to interpret this information. Okay, so then um, this was a distance of 41 kilometers. So notice I made my vector a little bit longer. Find the plane's total horizontal displacement total gain in altitude, and its resultant displacement. In other words, we're gonna find the resultant and we're gonna find the X and Y values of that resultant, and all three of those are going to be official answers, okay? So, um, where is our resultant? Here's where we started, here's where we ended. Sometimes these pictures get a little crowded, so just do your best. Um, I would recommend using a straight edge, if possible, to help you draw that line. <laughs> it's not very straight, was it? Okay, so <clears throat> when we look at our diagram, this is the resultant that I'm being asked to solve for. It is absolutely a diagonal, so I'm going to need... Um, to make sure that I break it up into my parts, okay? I have the horizontal axis here, which is going to be composed of the horizontal piece of my first vector and the horizontal piece of my second vector. So I'm gonna add those two up in order to find my total horizontal displacement. The vertical side of my diagonal is going to work in exactly the same way. It's going to be a portion of the vertical part of my Y1 vector plus the vertical part or my Y2 vector. And so I'm gonna add those up in order to calculate um, my vertical displacement. Okay, and then obviously I'm looking for the total resultant over here. Okay, so this is our diagram of what we are analyzing. Let's go ahead and get to it and let's work on this trick. Um, if I can, I'm going to... Hmm. Can I make this smaller? Yes, yes I can. All right, so um, we are going to go ahead and get started by calculating for vector one. Vector one, I have 27 kilometers. Remember that your units must be in meters, seconds, uh, meters per second, okay? Meters per second squared, that's what we're working in. So this first vector would be 27,000 meters must be converted into meters. Here's my X component, here's my Y component, and this angle is 15 degrees. So in order to calculate my um, sides, I need to do some trig here. So first I'm gonna calculate the value for X1, 
So this is the side adjacent to the known angle. So cosine of theta is equal to x over h. So x is equal to h times the cosine of theta. And so we're going to calculate that by saying 27,000 times the cosine of 15 degrees. And that's going to give us 26,079. But again, for explanation purposes, I am going to choose to just round this off so that we can focus on the process and not get caught up or lost in all of the digits. So 26,000 is the value we will use here. Okay, to solve for the um, y-axis, I'm going to use the side opposite the known value. So sine of theta is equal to that opposite side over my hypotenuse. So y is h times the sine of theta. So 27,000 times the sine of 15 degrees. So this gives me 6,988. I'm going to choose to just round that to 7,000. Again, breaking my own rule, but I want us to focus on the process and not get lost in the digits. Okay, so that's what we're going to do for um, the second vector as well. Here I have a value of 41,000. Again, we have to convert that into meters. I have my X side, I have my Y side. Um, and we're gonna go ahead and start off by calculating our X axis. So X is the hypotenuse times the cosine of theta. So 41,000 times the cosine of 30 degrees. For this triangle. That gives me a value of 3,507, which we're going to round to um, 36,000. And then our Y side, once again, is the opposite for this triangle. So it's going to be times the sine of theta. So 41,000 times the sine of 30 degrees. And that is going to give me 20,500. So, oh, 20,500, so we're gonna round that. Sorry, I forgot, we're rounding to 21,000 meters, okay? So that's how we find our parts, all right? So now, the question originally was asking us for the total horizontal displacement. So we need to find x total, okay? So we're simply gonna add, remember go back to the illustration when we were analyzing what's happening overall in the beginning. We're just simply adding x1 and x2 together. So this right here is going to give me my total, which is 62,000. And so assuming that we were using the unrounded numbers, which is what you're supposed to do, and then we went and rounded it, we would wanna take that answer with all of the digits and then round for sig figs and write the appropriate unit. So this would need to be boxed in because this is officially the answer to question A. Question B is asking for the total gain in altitude. So the total gain in altitude would be the Y total. So this is essentially question B, okay? So we're gonna take these two values, we're gonna add them up. Once again, we already analyzed our triangle so that we understood up front, this is how we would find our Y value. So we're going to add 21,000 plus 7,000. Again, you would be working with unrounded numbers, and so then you would need to sig fig, put your unit and box it in, and that is officially answering question B. Okay, 
So now we need to answer question C, which is asking for the resultant displacement. What is the overall resultant for this motion? So now we're going to take our big triangle and I'm gonna go ahead and choose one additional color here just so that we can follow how this all comes together. So this is my diagonal. So Pythagorean theorem or Pythagorean theorem. <laughs> and then once again, I am going to need to square root in order to solve for that hypotenuse. So my R value is going to be the square root. And then here, I would want to use my unrounded number. So if I had calculated this with actual specific digits, right, with kept my precision, and I had like 62059.732, I would want all of this to go into my calculation here, okay? Now, if your calculator will allow you to go and capture previously worked problems, then now would be the time that you would wanna go up, highlight that, and input it. If your calculator does not give you that ability, my per mine personally does not, then I have to rely on whatever I've written down on my paper so especially when you can see ahead of time that this is going to be one of those problems where you're carrying numbers over i would recommend that you jot down several digits so that if you had to manually retype it you could okay for the purpose of today's example um, i only have the unrounded i'm sorry the rounded answer to go by but again normally we would want to um, use the unrounded answers from our calculator all right, so when we type this in, and again, this should all be one entry in your calculator, please utilize that X squared button. Um, I don't want you messing with carrots. I want you to use the uh, X squared button whenever you can. So ideally, this is one entry for you, and it gives you 68,029. So my total displacement that they are asking me for would be written rounded for sig figs as 68,000 meters. All right, this last example that we're gonna look at is um, really more about understanding how to interpret this question. I'm not really gonna go through all of the actual math with you. Um, here it says that we have a car and it drives 50 meters per second along the horizontal. They didn't tell me if he's going east or west, right or left, so I'm just gonna choose a direction for myself. As long as it's horizontal, we're okay. Um, then the driver makes a 135 degree turn counterclockwise and drives at 40 meters per second. So this is the first thing that I want to clarify for you. From this horizontal axis, we are making a turn of 135 degrees. Okay, and so now we're going to have a vector like this at 40 meters per second. Okay, so they're asking for my resultant, which would be from here to here. Again, make sure that you always draw your vectors as arrows for grading purposes. So this is what the question is asking for. All right, so the first thing I want to address is um, how we interpret that counterclockwise. Secondly, I want us to look at this resultant and where are the X and Y components. My vertical component is all of this right here, okay? So if I can find the vertical part of vector two, that is the vertical piece of my entire resultant vector. If I look at the horizontal component of my resultant, my total horizontal component is actually only a portion of the original velocity vector that we were given. So we have two things here that I want to make sure you understand how to approach the problem. For the horizontal, 
component. Let's see. We had our 50 meter per second vector. And then we are only using this much of it. So how are we supposed to know how much this is when that value was not provided for us? Well, obviously we are just simply um, backtracking. We're taking away some of that original 50 meter per second velocity vector, but I want you to understand how that works. So we really need to look at vector two for this, okay? Vector two, is drawn so that we are going up and to the left. Or if we're using cardinal directions, we're going northwest, which means the vertical component of this is oriented north and the horizontal component of this is oriented west. So when we go to calculate this horizontal component, it's going to give us a negative value. So my total here is going to be calculated by taking all of x1 plus x2, but x2 is in the negative direction, okay? So this is how you're gonna go about calculating your horizontal component so that you can find your resultant. Okay, the second thing that we need to look at with this um, vector two, this diagonal that we're given. In order for me to do math here, okay, obviously I have a right triangle, it's right here. But I need to know one of these two angles. And right now, I don't know either one of them. So here's how you're supposed to figure out what those angles are. You should know that this entire piece right here is 180 degrees. The green part, the 135 degree turn, should be subtracted and whatever is left is how much we have as this inside angle value. So this angle right here is 45 degrees because I subtracted from 180, okay? It's not always going to be 45 degrees. If the problem had said that the card makes a turn of 120 degrees counterclockwise, you would have to subtract from 180 to figure out what that angle is, okay? Now that you have an angle, we can put that in over here on our right triangle, and then we should be able to do the appropriate trig to find the X or Y component.